session 40 of the book of Deuteronomy. And I hope by now you also understand the uh, gematria, the prophetic, beautiful, messianic mystery of the number 40. It's amazing that as we start with Deuteronomy 31, which again is just absolutely beautiful, we are at uh, session 40 because we are looking at messianic, mysterious, uh, prophet prophetic pictures in session 40 of Deuteronomy, the Debarim, the words of Father Yahuwah in this day and age for us. Verse 1, Moses went and spoke all these words to all of Israel, because all the words of God is for all the people of God for all the time. Nothing old, nothing new. And Moses said to them, I am 120 years old today. Interesting, Yahuwah gave long life to people. You remember how, you know, Adam became almost a, a thousand years old. Methuselah was the oldest man. He was 900 and something. I can't remember exactly. They got old in the days before um, their sin and before the world started rebelling um, as a Babylonian kingdom against Yahuwah. And as they stood up, as they decided to follow the genetic mixture of the fallen angel race in Genesis 6, where uh, death and destruction was brought upon the whole world. Remember Genesis 6 says there was only violence in their mind all the time. Whereas in direct opposition to that, the word of God is in our minds all the time. But because of... Um, of the fallen angel race and the Nephilim and the false religious systems and the whole esoteric, occult, ancient, alien, mysterious religions that started leering and deceiving all the world. God said in Genesis 6 verse 3, um, you will only now maximum become 120 years old. I'm taking away the blessing of long life from you. And you will only receive that blessing again in the new millennium when Yeshua reigns. We, we have that promise of the blessing, but not now. We are living in the cursed uh, existence that we are because of our disobedience to his word. But God said that long life blessing is now away in Genesis 6. From now on, I will no longer... Uh, you know, struggle with you anymore. And I'm taking away the longer, uh, you know, struggle with you anymore. And I'm taking away the blessing of long life. And the maximum you will get is 120. And a lot of people didn't even get 120. But Moses became 120 years old. Exactly. Not 121. Not 119. God allowed Moses a full life. Oh, I want to cry if I think about Moses. If we think about Moses, remember, since we started two and a half years ago with Genesis 1 verse 1, who wrote for us Genesis 1 verse 1? Who wrote all of Genesis, all of Exodus, all of Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy? Isn't it the prophet Moses? Isn't it... Yeshua himself, who is symbolized by Moses. We went through every, how he has met Yeshua, how he has met the face of God, how he was put into the cleft of the rock, how he struck the rock. Oh, how God said, I will send an amazing prophet just like Moses. And you think you're going to fall under judgment if you don't listen to Moses? Huh, this one is going to be worse. If you don't listen to this one, you'll be totally cut off from the house of Israel. God allowed Moses a full life. He became 120. He became the full existence of what God promised in Genesis 6 after he got so disappointed and so... Um, betrayed by us as humans 
And this man Moses, who loved God with really all his heart, eh? With really all his heart, eh? And uh, who gave his whole life for the kingdom. God, thank you for giving Moses 120 years to live on this earth. So he had enough time to write everything in your beginning of your book. Because we know that you declare the end out of the beginning. And if Moses didn't write all the yachts and the titles, all the amazing stuff that's hidden in the Hebrew, all the promises and the admonitions and the warnings that he wrote over and over and over again, if he didn't do that, what would we have today that explained you and your son as amazing as the books of Moses does. Thank you that you even testament that if it wasn't for Moses, we would not have known you. Because if we think about the scriptures written by Moses and the prophets, then it's all about Messiah. So this morning I, I give honor to the man Moses who became 120. And I give honor to the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Moses for allowing us four, no, three and a half thousand years later to have been so privileged to study every word written in the books of Moses. Okay, uh, back to the text. <coughs> um... Moses said, I'm 120 years old this day. I can no more go it, uh, go in and come out. Also, Yahuwah said to me, you shall not go over the Yord, uh, Jordan River. You shall not go over the Yord, uh, Jordan River. We have studied um, the uh, hitting of the rock after he was um, you know, supposed to speak to the rock. Um, I hope you remember why this terrible... Uh, judgment came over Moses, this amazing man of God, and he wasn't allowed. Basically, Moses represents the Torah, you remember as well. And Joshua represents Yeshua. And we know the Torah is Yeshua. Moses and Joshua together, God, the, the, the law and God, the son, together led Israel through the wilderness out of Egypt. But it is the living word, Yeshua, that will take us over the Jordan River into the promised land. It will not be the written Torah alone. If the written Torah is not broken once, written again the second time upon your heart, you will not enter the promised land. The written Torah is the most important thing of all the universe. But it means nothing if it's not written on your heart. And you do it because you love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart. And you love your neighbor as yourself. Um, verse 3. Yahuwah, your Elohim, He will go over before you. It's not really the man, Joshua. Joshua, the man, represents Yeshua that will go over before us, that will lead us. We will meet him in the sky when he resurrects us. And his feet will land upon Mount Zion. He is going to take us over. We will do the, the last Passover. We are going to pass over Ivrit, cross over the very last time through death into the promised land. Just like the uh, Charles Spurgeon went. Just like the... Uh, Charles Spurgeon wrote that beautiful book. Uh, I don't agree with everything he wrote in the book, but um, The Little Pilgrim's Progress and the very last obstacle was the river of death before he went into the king's city. Yahuwah, your Elohim, he's the one that will go before you and he will destroy these nations from before you and you shall possess them and Jehoshua shall go before you as Yahuwah have said. Yeshua said all the time, I only come in the name of my Father. I come before my Father has sent me. I only speak what I heard from my Father. As Yahuwah said, Joshua, Yeshua, Yeshua will take us over. But Yahushua is a with Yahuwah. And that's why Moses says Yahuwah himself 
will go before you. And Jehovah shall do to them your enemies as he did to Shechon. Um, and remember these, uh, these, uh, this king, uh, Ochaf Bashan, were a Nephilim, great king of the earth. He had six fingers and six toes, representing the whole Babylonian Nephilim occult mysterious serpent kingdom. Don't, don't worry. Yahuwah, as he destroyed them in the wilderness, he's going to destroy the end time Nephilim system as well. He will destroy the end time mysterious Babylonian one world order with their mixed genetic uh, multiplication, just as he did there. Don't, don't stress. Don't worry. Just follow Yahushua. Just follow Moses and Joshua through the wilderness. Don't lose heart. Believe God. Trust in all his promises. Don't want to, to turn back to Egypt every five minutes. Don't think it was better minutes. Don't think it was better there. It is worse in the wilderness. Yes, we are being allowed to be hungry and thirsty and the sun is beating upon us and there's enemies all around us and there's uh, conflict inside of the camp. That's all fine, guys. Let's just endure all the way to the end so that we can pass over, cross over, do the final Hebrew, the final Ivrit, following our rabbi. So our master is a man of war. He is going to destroy the kings of this earth. Just read Psalm 2. Oh, please go and read Psalm 2 and pray Psalm 2. God laughs at the great kings of this earth that stands up against God and against his son and who says we don't want to be under your authority we will, we will your authority God sits in heaven he laughs at them and he allows them according to the prophetic times according to what was prophesied how long everything must be remember <clears throat> Israel could pray until they were blue God didn't save them God didn't send Moses. God didn't bring the plagues and destroyed Egypt and brought them out before the prophetic 400 years was passed, as he promised to Abraham. There are prophecies that has to be fulfilled. Jesus is not coming back tomorrow. Anyway, so our, our master is a man of war. Yahuwah shall deliver them up before your face, that you may do to them according to all the commandments which I have commanded you. <clears throat> remember, we have to remember the Torah. We have to remember what to do with the enemies of God. We have to be strict because we have to be clean, because we have to be kadosh. And that sometimes mean that you have to cut off family and friends that is not allowing you to be kadosh. In the tribulation times, in the end time wilderness times, we have to stick to Torah. We have to stick to Yeshua. And once we, um, like Israel, overcame the enemy they didn't keep the Torah. Otherwise, they would have been able to keep the promised land. But because they did not stick to the words of Moses, that he, that he warned them over. I mean, how many times have we read this now in Abbas Debarim? Do not go according to the nations. Don't f worship me like the nations worship their gods. Don't fall for the great kings of this earth. Don't follow the nations and all their ways. And yet they did it, and that's why they lost the promised land. Let us not make the same mistake. Let us not go to the left or to the right of the words of God. Be strong, God says. Strong, God says. Be of good courage, God says. Verse 6. And you can underline this for yourself, for your son, for your daughter. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear. Do not be afraid of them, for Yahuwah, your Elohim, he it is that does go with you. Yay! He will not fail us, guys. Um, a lot of you are going through very tough times. I do understand. We are all going through very difficult times. We can see the end times looming up above us looming before us, looming in front of our faces. Let us not forget what we are busy with. 
We are busy with an amazing journey. Let us, between all the fear of losing our jobs and the universities and be persecuted because of our choices, our pro-Torah choices, in this current world mandatory system <clears throat> and what is coming in livelihood, let us not be afraid. Let us not fear. Be strong, guys. Be of good courage. Because Yahuwah is He that is with us. Don't forget that. Yahshua is the one that went before us. There was a time when Yahshua was spit in His face. There was a time when His disciples, after doing the greatest work on earth, being fishers of men, each one of them besides John were mercilessly killed. Let us not be afraid of losing our lives in this world because Yeshua says if you lose your life for my name's sake you will have eternal life you will be my name's sake you will have eternal life you will be longer you'll you'll get older than 120 you will fulfill the blessings God gave to Adam and Eve and you will live for him with him forever let us not be afraid let us not be deceived by the serpent language. You understand that now. Now that you can stand up against the deception. And the mass indoctrination. And the sun God worship system. The next step that you need to be encouraged with is do not be afraid. Do not fear. Be of good courage. See I am with you. I will never forsake you. I, I will never ever forsake you. There's a prophetic time that stuff has to go through. Just because you don't hear me or you don't see me or you don't um, see blessings in your life right now, don't think that I'm not with you, says Yahuwah. You're it to you than a brother. Our end time um, um, encouragement together with Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 is Hebrews 13 verse 5. Hebrews 13 verse 5 repeats Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. He says, Let your way of life be without the love of silver and be satisfied with what you have. For has God not said, I shall never leave you nor forsake you? Yahuwah is my helper. I shall not fear what man can do to me. So Paul says in Hebrews 13 verse 5 and 6, We must be satisfied with what we have, even if silver you shall not be able to buy and sell if you don't take the mark of the beast. Let your way of life be without the love of silver. Be satisfied with what you have. They weren't satisfied with the manna. Remember in the wilderness, they said, we are sick of this manna. We want the meat and the onions and the leeks of Egypt. Let us, this end time remnant, be satisfied with every little piece of bread we have out of the hand of our God. Because he has said, I shall never leave you nor forsake you. So that we can boldly say, Yahuwah is my helper. I shall never fear what the men of this world that is ruled by the serpent system can do to me. Psalm 108, do to me. Psalm 118 verse 6. Remember those leading you who spoke the word of Elohim to you. Verse 7 of Hebrews 13. Remember Moses who is leading you who spoke the Deuteronomy, the Abbas Debarim to, to you. Ah. Oh. Consider the outcome of their behavior. And imitate their belief. Imitate what you see. How amazing Moses and Joshua's belief and their faith was. Joshua and Caleb. Oh, David. Jonathan. Joseph. Imitate 
all these guys who have been speaking the Debarim to you all the last two and a half years through two trees in the Garden of Eden. In Jennifer is speaking to you through his words and he is encouraging you. Do not fear what man can do to you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Remember the, the leaders of Torah who spoke the Debarim to you who spoke Yeshua to you. Consider the outcome of the behavior of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and Paul and Peter and imitate their faith, James and Timothy and, uh, and John. Because why? Why, why, why? Hebrews 13, 8, Yeshua, Messiah, the Word of God, is the same yesterday there with Adam. It's the same today Today with me and you. And it will be the same forever and ever and ever into the future. Do not be borne about by various and Do not be borne about by various and strange teachings. Alright, stick to the teachings that you find inside the camp. Don't go to the teachings outside the camp. Don't follow the way of the pagans. Don't follow the way of the rest of the world. Like God says in Deuteronomy 31, destroy the enemies as the Torah tells you. And Moses called to Joshua and said to him, in the sight of all of Israel, be strong Joshua and of good courage Joshua, for you must go with his people Joshua to a land which Yahuwah <coughs> I sworn to their forefathers. And you shall come and cause them to inherit it. Yeshua had to be strong while he was weeping on his knees. And he was encouraged by the angels after he said, Your will, my father, not mine. Because Yeshua He's going to cause us to inherit the promises made to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Amen. And Yahuwah, he is it that does go before you. He will be with you. He will never fail you. He will never forsake you. Fear not, O oh dear Bible study faithful and loyal servant neither be dismayed and Moses wrote this Torah in a scroll and delivered it to the Kohanim the priests the sons of Levi who bore the ark of the covenant the ark of the testimony of Yahuwah remember the testimony of Yahuwah remember the end time saints in the book of revelations are those who do the Torah and have the testimony of Yahshua. And here you can cross-reference Hebrew, uh, Deuteronomy 31 verse 9. Cross-reference Torah and testimony with Revelations 12 verse 17, Revelations 14 verse 12, Revelations 22 verse 14. And Moses commanded them saying, At the end of every seven years, when you, f when you feast, the year of release at the Feast of Sukkot, when all of Israel comes to appear before Yahuwah, your Elohim, in the place that he shall choose, Jerusalem, you shall read the Torah before all of Israel in their hearing. We are in exile. We do not feast tabernacles in Jerusalem. We are in slavery. We are in Egypt. We are stuck under the Pharaoh system. We are not going up to Jerusalem yet at the end of seven years. Because remember, we've got 6,000 years on this earth. Then Yeshua will come back. The Antichrist will rule. Then Yeshua will come back. We'll have the first resurrection. He will put Satan into the abyss, into the pit for a thousand years. And he will rule and reign with an iron rod upon this earth for the thousand years. And then after the thousand years have been completed, the Bible says, a revelation, the second resurrection will come. 
Satan will be released and Choch and Machoch will happen. All the world, since the beginning, everybody will be raised and will be deceived by Satan to stand up against the new Jerusalem that has, after the thousand years, come down from, from heaven. And Jehovah himself will live with us. Amen. And then this come down from, from heaven. And Jehovah himself will live with us. Amen. And then the final Gehenna fire from God's mouth will destroy them forever and there will be no more death and no more sin and no more Satan. And then at the end of 7,000 years, we will finally have the final release of everything that was ever against God. And the Torah will be read. The Torah is not over when Yeshua comes back. It then really starts because this time we will, we will read it without anything that will ever be in our way again. Even our tears will be, he will wipe away all our tears. Because after the final death of everybody that even we have tried so desperately to bring to salvation and truth. will have to have perished under the judgment fire. Not so much. But then we will finally be able to read the Torah. In the year of release. Oh, everything in the Old Testament is so prophetic. Gather the people together, verse 12. Men and women and children. And the um, strangers that is within your family. So you have to teach your children. Remember, Deuteronomy, the Torah says, teach your children. Do not let them go and play while you study the Torah. Because... When you come sometimes to my house and we do Bible studies, we sometimes go on for four or five hours. I know. But we always send our children to go and play. We, we have to start letting them listen as we read the Torah and discuss these things. The stranger that's within your gates so that they may shema hear, so that they may learn, so that they may fear. Yahuwah your Elohim. And so that they can do all the Debarim of this Torah. Amen. And your children. And the children of the strangers. Remember the lost tribes through Ephraim and Manasseh. The house of Israel scattered into every tribe, nation and tongue. Are the strangers that has been far away. That must also now come near and be grafted back into the olive tree. So all the strangers and the children of the strangers, the seed, the nakwa the children um, of the people that have never known God, let them call to God and start searching Him with all their heart and start, start to try to learn about Him. Let them also hear and learn to fear Yahuwah your Elohim. As long as you live in the land, fear Yahuwah your Elohim. As long as you live in the land, which you go over the Jordan River to possess. Hearing comes, uh, 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 faith comes by hearing the word of Elohim. But faith without works is dead. Because hearing the word of Elohim that builds faith has got to do with learning and fearing and obeying. Remember Deuteronomy 10 verse 12? Or was it 12 verse 10? Which one was it? Now I can't remember. Deuteronomy uh, 10 verse 12. And now Israel, what does Yehoah your Elohim require of you? But to fear him, to have your way in his ways, to love him and to serve him, and to shema all his commandments. That is what is expected of us. Encouragement for the end days. We do lots of wilderness challenges. But let us not fear. Because he, he is with us. Is he not guys? He's with you. And he, just because you're emotionally. Maybe you don't feel him. You don't hear him. Or you don't uh, see him. Just look up. This morning the sun came up again in the east. Your God who commanded that sun 6,000 years ago to come up in the east and go down in the west. He is the one that will not let one of the words that ever came out of his mouth 
fall to the ground. Otherwise, the sun would have fallen to the ground long time ago. Long time ago. Trust him. Trust him with me. He is faithful. Amen. Amen and amen.